going to go through all the markets that I trade. It's Wednesday, February 7th. So let's start by taking a look at gold. I'm going to go through all the markets and see if there's any uh, trading opportunities. I've already spotted some trading opportunities and I have some orders already in and ready to take advantage of what I see. So let's take a look first at gold and uh, and see what I see here. So we have a monthly area of demand and control. Price rallied up right here on the weekly hit resistance and now it's starting to pull back. So we have this area here where about 48,000 positions long were filled in by the institutions. So we could see a momentum shift and a move to the upside like that. Um, I'm also looking at this area here. If price breaks through this area and does not cause momentum shift, it could uh, come down here and create a momentum shift from there. Ideally, I'd like to get in long right here. So move down here and then up. That's ideally what I'd like to do. But I'm watching for momentum shift here, momentum shift here, and uh, possibly even the weekly 20 EMA, which will be this area. So anywhere about here, I'll be watching for momentum to shift. And uh, if I do see momentum shifting, I'll be... Uh, I'll be ready to jump on board. So let's take a look here at gold. Where we stand in terms of the position. So 77% long exposure. So 350 was very aggressive and then we saw a decline. 305, so aggressive positions. And we can get more bullish. All right. So some profit taking makes complete sense, right? We've been expecting this for quite some time. And we got a great area here to go long. We get that drop and I'm going long. Weekly demand zone long. H4 longs off of daily demand. That removes the weekly trend line. Yeah, anywhere around here. Okay. Uh, oil. Oil taking profits, hitting a weekly area of supply that was already previously tested. We're now sitting within a weekly area where institutions last filled 38,000 long positions. We've already got a nice daily supply zone. Dropping price. So we're in here at this weekly area of demand. Now I want to get long, so weekly is overextended, and I have a <coughs> excuse me. I have a good um, feeling that this uh, this trend line is going to break because hitting weekly supply, dropping down, hitting this area here did not form a nice uh, two to one move away. We could get a, a move like that, and then continue to get weaker, just like the US CAD getting weaker. So, um, no, this won't do. So since weekly will be broken, we will need daily confirmation. So daily confirmation would be, you know, even like that breaking up higher, but I wanted to pull back lower. Where do I think there's a good chance that we see uh, where's that monthly 20 EMA right down here? Yeah, we could see a drop. I mean, look, this can get taken out. This can get taken out. It could be here. Yeah, it could be here. This is a, a spot that could actually cause a move up. And I think this is probably the best spot right here. It's a weekly demand zone nested at the monthly 20 EMA right here. With a monthly uptrend, monthly 20 EMA. We could see a drop here. And let me see, that would actually be, yeah. This top here, 
could act as support for that move. So obviously buying oil now is ridiculous because it's way too high. And um, you know, you take a look at positions, it's just crazy. 87% of their overall overall exposure is geared to the the long side. Look how look how aggressive this is. This is way too aggressive. So we've been saying for the last few weeks, we gotta wait, we gotta wait, we gotta wait for that pullback. <coughs> so I'm watching for this pullback. I'm expecting this area to break, bigger drop, and then I'll be waiting for momentum to shift. And it'll have to shift on the daily chart. I gotta see a momentum shift on the daily chart. And you know, I'll be watching the caught reports to to look for uh, profit taking on longs and then eventually an accumulation of long positions again to make a bigger move to the to the upside so that's what i got going on uh us dollar my broker hasn't updated the us dollar chart they say they're looking for liquidity providers which is just completely crazy so i was looking to see if we can get some momentum shifts to the downside from here and I believe uh, by looking at other brokers and data feeds, we're getting, we're inching closer to, to hitting this area here. Very close. We're about here. But uh, looking at the yeah, euro and the pound, it looks like this will eventually break through and we can get a move higher. That's what I think is going to happen. But we'll wait and see. Not taking any trades off of that just yet. So if the US dollar does climb higher, I'm expecting this one to follow suit with a move down here. Okay, I move down here and I have orders to go long there. I think that's a good trade. We got monthly in an uptrend and um, we got this really nice bullish engulf here with this weekly demand zone nested. So, you know, this was tested so it broke. This was fresh and it broke. Now we got this area here, so we could see that. Uh, tested, so this is gonna break. Here's the next area that we could see um, a push up from. It's possible, but ideally down here for Aussie. So Aussie weakness is what I'm seeing, basically. And let's take a look at the data here. Aussie weakness, right? We were bullish, bearish, now neutral. So very possible that we get this move down here. A move down on the chart, right? Entering neutral territory. 56% long, which is nothing. So, um, what's the trade setup? Well, need uh, daily supply out for longs, which I don't think will happen. Or H4 momentum shift off daily demand zone that took out a weekly supply zone. Yeah, right here. Because weekly is still up. So, looking for momentum shifts on 4 hour or longs from down here. Aussie cat. I got orders to go long here. Fell short within hit, uh, from hitting that. I want to see a nice push down so I can get in. So if uh, US, if the Aussie continues to drop, which is what I'm expecting, I want this to pull down here for me to trigger, and then I move to the upside. Because eventually, I do believe Aussie is going to get stronger, and I also think that the CAD is going to get weaker. So that would fuel this move to the upside. So I'm looking to get in long down here. Long's a weekly demand. H4 momentum shifts from weekly demand zone. Yeah, secondary trades. Aussie yen. What do we see here? No shorts unless monthly trend line is out. Yeah, this one here. Daily demand zones off, weekly demand zone long. So 
here's the weekly demand zone we now have it in control and uh, looking for daily demand zones off so yeah the setup is not happening so I'm not looking to trade this one um, because there's nothing really clear all right we got supply and control we got trend line here in control so I mean very speculative I would go short if this zone was taken out I'd go short if that zone was taken out so waiting on that so I, I could update this no shorts unless Monday trend line is out and weekly demand zone out there Aussie New Zealand so I like this trade here I'm waiting for a move up here to take a short target one target two target three targeting a move down here on the weekly chart so Aussie weakness that Aussie weakness happens I'm expecting this to drop Aussie weakness and um, Kiwi has to hold and if you take a look at the Kiwi with all this weakness that we're getting from the pound euro Aussie this has been holding this weekly poorly formed demand zone has been holding daily bullish and golf it's like holding up here so I think it's very possible to see the Aussie get weak and the Kiwi to uh, pretty much stay strong just waiting for this candle to close and then a nice push up where I will get short here and then ride for the three targets downwards Need weekly supplies on out for longs, no shorts. Daily supplies on short. If we... There we go. That's what I'm looking to do. I think it's a good trade. Weekly trend down. Monthly's in consolidation, but we just took out this monthly bullish and golf. We have room to move down here. Like that. This is taken out. This isn't a zone, so it can easily break through. So that's what I'd like to do with that. CAD yen. So CAD yen. We have this monthly imbalance and control. Trend line looks like it's on the edge of breaking. On the weekly chart, we had this area take out an imbalance right here and in the process of removing this trend line. If it does, decide to consolidate down. And this trend line looks on the verge of breaking. A rally up here is what I'll be looking to take for shorts. Because like I said, weak CAD is what I'm expecting. So, um, I think this could be a really good trade over the longer term. Especially with the US dollar Japanese yen, I'm expecting a drop on that. With the uh, with, um, US dollar weakness. So, watching for that, seeing how it sets up. If it sets up, then it's going to be an indication to me that the institutions are, are piling in short. Euro US dollar, as mentioned, hitting monthly supply. And now the institutions are closing off their long positions, causing price to drop, which is what we see now. So, um, the trade I'm looking to take is, you know, if we look at this weekly chart, this is a poorly formed area here. It's got a confluence with the trend line, so we could see momentum shift and then push higher could see that but let's analyze something here is the monthly in an uptrend that's the question my guess is my, not my guess my analysis tells me no because we got this trend line here 
price broke through it. Small retrace. Okay. Now oh, another trend. Some consolidation. So, with a monthly supply and control and consolidation on the chart, my rules say price can go down. The only thing that could stop it is a weekly zone like this one or this one here where 10,000 positions long were added last time institutions had price here. So I think there's a good chance we get all the way down here. I think that's a, that's a pretty good chance. Um, so that's what I'm watching for. You know, institutions taking profits. You know, they start to take profits January 30th. Okay, it was recorded January 30th. They start taking profits. You know, you look at these numbers here and the coloration of the cells, bright green, right? Overextended. We needed some profit taking, so that's what they're doing, taking profits. And price is dropping. So, so um, weekly demand for long, looking here, be waiting for momentum to shift. We've got the weekly uptrend intact. So, uh, but because monthly supply is in control, It'll have to be a really good momentum shift to the upside for me to want to get involved. Plus, I'd love to see the CFTC, you know, reports in the future to see the indication that the institutions are done taking uh, profits and now they're starting to pile back on to their um, to their long positions. So that might take some time because monthly supply, this is a big deal, right? It's a big deal. So, we'll be keeping an eye on this. Euro Aussie. Da, da, da. Monthly area of demand and control. Weekly area of demand and control. Trade signal to go long was here. Trade signal to go long was here. Push. Tested. Weekly supply and control. A move down. I'd like to go long down here. If price gets down here with the euro weakness, I got orders to go long. Why? Monthly, weekly demand and control. Weekly's already tested. Come down. Very strong area of demand. I want to get in long here. And so I got first target here at 2 to 1, where one third of my position will be closed. Second target here at opposing daily supply. Third target opposing daily weekly supply. So targeting a move like this. Because I, I do believe Euro is going to get strong again. Right? And the Aussie. Uh, stronger than the Aussie. Right? Euro. 70%. Aussie, 56. Which one's stronger? More conviction to go long here, right? Than the Aussie. So stronger Euro over Aussie. Stronger Euro over Aussie. So. Um, so I think at hitting that first target there is uh, is high odds then after that whatever happens happens because you can make an argument for the fact that Aussie has lots of room for longs to be added to and the institutions haven't yet committed fully to going long the Aussie and when they do we can ex we could expect an explosive move right and because here's the deal you know we don't have a monthly supply in control we only have a weekly supply right here's a weekly supply that's been tested here very strong move, so same area was able to be held. Next time was a little bit higher, grabbing more supply and dropping. So we have a weekly area of supply holding price down, whereas on the euro we have a monthly. What's stronger? Monthly. So 
it could play out differently. That's why my first target is there, to close half my pos or one third of my position. That way, it's um, a risk free trade. Euro CAD. So this one, Euro Strength, CAD Weakness. So I believe this one's going to go higher as well. I got an area here that I'm watching for, for potential setups. But what I want to wait for is, I want to wait for Euros to be done with profit taking. I want it to make its drop. I want the drop to react to some demand. I want momentum to start to shift. I want there to be a clear signal that price is going to go back to the upside. And once that happens, then I will be looking at Euro pairs for confirmation to get in. But I think this is one of the Euro pairs that I'm interested in getting in. It could be from here. It could be from here. It could be from down here. Don't know where it's going to be from, but that's what I'm watching for. Let's take a look at the four hour. Nice pullback now. Nice pullback. I'm going to get a bigger drop here. Scalpers should be loving this right now, shorting this Euro cat. Alrighty. So I think this is one of those. Um, those trades that are going to work out quite well. Looking at the monthly chart, yeah, I've had arrows indicating a move to the upside for quite some time. Yep. So, all the technical suggests that move is happening, is going to happen. So, we'll keep on watching that one. Euro pound. Very messy. Which one's going to be stronger, euro or pound? Hmm. Hard to say, so this one's going to be doing a lot of back and forth. Right now we're reacting to this area of supply. We see price dropping now. No clear trade setups. As for Euro Yen, there's a possibility of price going higher, but there's also a possibility of price going lower. With the Euro weakness, if Euro decides to really respect this monthly supply, and then we see a drop, like a big drop, you know, this is all garbage, this is all garbage, this is all garbage, this is all garbage. Price can easily drop through here. <clears throat> Price can easily drop through here and react to here. And we could we could see a bigger drop. That's possible. But nothing's clear on this chart, so I'm not yet looking to take any trades on this one. Euro Kiwi. This one also, you know, it's not very clear. New daily demands on that weekly demand. Right here, new daily demands would have been this one, but it didn't move to one, so it wasn't a trade. No trade signal there. Nothing clear, so I'm not taking any trades on this one. Pound, US dollar. So, monthly area of supplies and control, just like the Euro. So we're expecting profit taking, which is what's happening. We have a really nice area of supply on the daily chart. I'm looking to short it, if, if price gets up there. With the target here, the target, and the other targets here. That's the move I'm looking to take advantage of. And once we get down here, we've got, we got a weekly imbalance here, which may or may not uh, send price back up. Because, you know, taking a look at higher time frame charts, we've got an imbalance here. And that monthly is nested in that imbalance. Okay, it's nested in that imbalance, and the weekly is nested in that monthly. So we're getting reaction from there. So it could it could be a substantial pullback. You know, I haven't ruled that out yet. You know, look at this. This is you know, garbage. Price can easily break through. 
or react here. It's possible. But I don't know where it's going to be. I'll have to wait and see. But I did know that they were going to take profits here, and that's exactly what's happening, right? Here's that weekly area of supply. I said they were going to take profits at, and that's exactly what's happening. Profit taking. So I'll look for momentum shift over here. And if that happens, I'll take a long. Right? I'll also be looking at the US dollars to see how it's reacting from its own chart as well. But continued uh, sell-off is, is what I'm expecting. And I'd like to take advantage of it if I get that move up like that. Pound Aussie. So, weekly area of supply and control. Monthly uptrend. Monthly took out uh, a supply. Clearing the skies for a move higher. We had a trade signal to go along here. So reacting, um, auto daily demand. Here is another trade signal that was missed. Fell short of hitting that zone for long entry. Made a nice move away. So now I am waiting to see um, how price is going to react ba back down at these areas here if we get back down here but again just like with the euro pairs I'm waiting to see the foundation be built under the uh, pound wait for confirmation wait to see the institutions buying back up the pound and when I see clear indication that that's happening then I'll be more inclined to take longs on these pound pairs but I won't do that before I see all that um, all those, all that proof that I need first, that the uh, institutions are ready to take a long look. All right, so um, uh, pound CAD. This one is um, daily demand is off weekly demand, which is down here. Yeah, if price gets down here and the pound is creating a Momentum shift to the upside. I'll look to take longs down here. I'd like. I'd, I wouldn't mind that. Strong pound, weak CAD, right? This might be the zone that holds right here, like that. But again, waiting to see uh, pound build the foundation beneath it. But I think this could be a good candidate for a move to the upside. Pound Yen. This one could be a good candidate for a move to the downside. If Pound continues to get very weak, then I think, because, you know, as the US dollar has been getting weaker, US Japanese Yen has been holding, right? So, the Yen, the yen hasn't been uh, dropping as hard. Well, let me see. Let me remind myself. Yeah, US dollar is rallying, this one's not. It wants to drop it. The yen wants to get stronger. Right? So if the pound continues to drop, euro goes up, this one's going to go down. So if we get a consolidation away here, and then a move up here, I'll take this short. Like that. Because we are at a monthly supply imbalance here. And we're already getting good signs that the institutions are selling short this pair. So if I get everything to look proper, I'll take the short like that. Okay. Pound Kiwi. So uh, weekly imbalance and control. We got to move to the upside. Trade trigger was... Trade signal is here. To go long. Worked a little bit. Tested the weekly supply again. Broke through the area. Why? Because weekly top of the range supply is in control. So we can't take uh, daily zones off of that. And profit taking on the pound. So I also had originally set up a trade here. It was a, it was a momentum shift trade. 
off the daily zone. I cancelled it because of the sell-off in the pound. And it was a good thing that I did because it would have been a loss. So that's just the thing, you know. Um, with trading, you always got to put your ego aside and be objective. You know, I've been waiting for this trade setup for a long time, so my mind wanted it to work. My mind wanted to see it work. So here I was setting up the trade, and then, boom, my objective mind kicked in. I was like, wait a minute, I can't take a long here. A weekly supply against a daily zone, and there's a sell-off in the pound? Nah, gotta cancel that. Sure enough, some great, some great insight. Just like wanting to take a short here, then canceling it, because the strength of the U.S. dollar, I believe the U.S. dollar is going to go up even higher. So I don't want to take any shorts uh, just yet. I want to see when the U.S. dollar is about to collapse and then look for a good trade opportunity here because then I know I'm going to get a move down here. You know, as the U.S. dollar rallies, this is kind of just holding, right? So what do you think is going to happen when the U.S. dollar drops? Shut them. That's my thought. U.S. CAD. So we're at... Three month area of demand. Falling short of hitting a weekly area here. But as US dollar goes higher, we're stalling. US dollar has a little bit of a pullback. I believe it's going to come back here where I am interested and have orders ready to go long. And I'll just target right here this weekly area of supply because this is weekly supply. It may break, may not break. I'm not interested to take trades. Um, and it's a monthly bearish engulf. So I'm just looking for in here, out here. Short trade. Kiwi, been holding pretty well considering all the other majors dropping. And it's holding up here. So relatively strong Kiwi. So um, if we get a weak pound and a strong, weak pound, strong Kiwi, yeah bigger drop right look at the monthly chart yeah can get a bigger drop right through here tum, 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 to the trend line and then a move up that could happen US Swiss franc nice push upwards I think there's a really good chance the price comes up to this weekly area of supply momentum shift and then a move to the downside that's what I think is gonna happen so right now some really nice strength coming in I got some long positions that I opened up here 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 and starting to take profit well not profit I'm starting to go into profit with those trades so that's working out quite well same with the euro I started shorting the euro here 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 Start getting profits on that now. We're going into profit. And then here, 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 here. Shorted the pound. So that's playing out pretty well. And let's take a little look at Bitcoin. This disaster. <laughs> Unbelievable. Almost 20,000. Made as low as 6,000. And people are still talking about buying this. I mean, look at this move. Why would anybody buy this? I mean, come on. You're gambling. You want to go to the casino? Go to the casino. But, you know, don't be stupid and buy Bitcoin as it's been traveling downwards. You know, the only reason why it's going to pop up is because of speculation, right? People think, oh, now's a good time to buy. And then it's going to be hit with supply. And then it's going to drop even further. I mean, it's just crazy. Stop trading Bitcoin, guys. Anybody out there trading Bitcoin, you're... You're just crazy, period. So that's all the pairs that I trade. That's what I'm looking for. I showed you some of the setups that I'm going to be taking. And I uh, hope this video was useful for you to plan your own trades. All right? Trade safe out there. Remember, always be objective and um, don't rush yourself into any bad trades. We'll see you again. Take care.